So this is why I think you should learn to code. And the first reason is that coding rewires your brain. So learning to code really teaches your brain how to think in a very weird way. It kind of teaches you how to look for different edge cases, which means that you get really good at looking for how could this go wrong? which might sound a bit negative, but I don't think it is because it develops this really powerful problem solving framework that extends far beyond coding. And one really good example of this is that about two years ago, I bought a sailboat without any experience at all. I'd never set foot on a sailboat before, which meant I knew nothing. I knew absolutely nothing. But thanks to my coding, I was w way better able to figure out and find different potential problems and also prevent different problems from occurring. Because that pattern of thinking, of looking for what could go wrong, is something that you use so much in programming that you get really good at finding those problems. And I know that I was sort of able to prevent things that I wouldn't have been able to prevent before because that pattern of thinking was just so fit it was just so easy for me to go into it and it's sort of like a pattern of thinking that is almost like a street that you've been down several times before so when you go down the street you recognize that straight away because you're like oh this is a familiar street i've been here before and it's the same thing with that sort of pattern of thinking and i've never really thought of that before until i started doing stuff with the boat and i just realized that i'm way better at thinking about different problems and just preventing things than I was before. And similarly, last year I was studying for this national exam here in Sweden where there's a little bit of math and stuff and I hadn't studied math in years. So I was kind of worried going into that. But as I was doing it, I just started realizing that all of a sudden these things that I've seen before back in the day, they just started to make sense to me. Things that didn't used to make sense just sort of made sense and it was easy. And it was a really clear example of my problem solving skills just having leveled up, which is extremely cool to see for me because other than the gym, I don't think I've ever seen progress as clear as that. Another really key lesson that coding teaches you is how to break down really abstract ideas into logic. So computers really only understand logic. So that means that you get really good at breaking down abstract concepts into their logical components, if that makes sense. For example, take something as simple as creating a basic to-do list app. It actually requires you to do some pretty complex things, which is you have to somehow write down the tasks, you have to display the tasks, you have to create some sort of system to check off the tasks. And the more that you code, the more or the better you get at breaking these problems down into more manageable, actionable steps. And this skill is particularly valuable for entrepreneurs because whatever you end up entrepreneuring, it will need to be built. And learning to code teaches you again how to break down these abstract ideas into concrete actionable steps if you can do that you can build anything number two why ai isn't taking your job i think this is an important point to just make because a lot of people are worried about will ai take my job as soon as i graduate will ai have taken over and i will have no job opportunities i don't think this will happen because i think ai is incredibly good at coding but it's more so good at assisting you with coding. So even if we consider that it will get better, at some point in the future, it will get to the point where you can tell it, just make me a to-do list app. And it will make you a to-do list app for you, a complete to-do list app. But the problem is that it might make you a red themed to-do list app that looks like Tick Tick. And maybe what you want is a green themed to-do list app that looks like Todoist. Now, the obvious counter to this is that, well, you could have just told it in the prompt to make a green Todoist styled app. And that's true. But if I end up having to write an entire document telling the AI, well, I want the button to be red and I want it to be on the right and I want this text to be a little bit smaller and I want that to be there, then we're back to basically programming it. Now, that's a very simple example just to kind of show my point here, but it really does highlight the broader issue with AI, which is that AI can become really good at performing the tasks, but someone will still need to be there to tell it what to do. I sort of think of programmers as a chef in a kitchen, if that makes sense. Like the chef doesn't actually cook the food, but 
it's a chef that knows how to combine the different dishes, what the timing should be, and how to make everything come together perfectly to make the specific dish, if that makes sense. That's the same with programmers. Programmers will need to be the ones to guide the AI to do what we want. And you need some sort of understanding of how these systems work if you're going to be able to guide it. This video is sponsored by a company that I'm really proud to be working with, which is Springboard. And finding your way into tech can sometimes feel a little bit overwhelming. So looking at job postings and just thinking like, will I ever have the skills needed for this job? And that's where Springboard comes in. It's this online learning platform that's actually practical. You're not just watching videos and hoping for the best. You're actually building real world projects and getting feedback and guidance from industry mentors. Plus they have a get a job or your money back guarantee which means if you qualify, you get 100% of your tuition refunded if you don't get a job within the guarantee period after graduating from the bootcamp. And not to mention 85.6% job qualified individuals who reported an offer received it within 12 months of graduation. Check out Springboard Software Engineering Bootcamp and get $2,000 off the entire bootcamp from now only until December 3rd. You can learn more and see if you qualify for the job guarantee using the code HOLDEN2000 through the link in my description. And thank you to Springboard for sponsoring this video. Another reason that AI isn't going to replace programmers anytime soon is that software is rarely, if ever, finished, meaning that it goes through iterations, like it goes through updates and iterations, and that's the constant game of software. There's no program out there really, at a larger scale at least, that is finished. And that's just like, well, we're done. We don't need to do anything with this. And the thing is that AI might be able to help automate a lot of that stuff and it might help speed up the process of these iterations and updates. But what that will do is it won't replace the programmers. It will just increase the demand or the output from the programmers. Tasks that once took an entire month to do now might be completed in a week or maybe in a couple years, it might be a day or an hour. And that I think will just increase expectations of output exponentially it won't necessarily decrease the need for the developers it will just increase the expectations on the developers this is why i don't think that programming jobs will disappear i think the role of the programmer might evolve and change but it won't vanish number three coding is free leverage this is why I think everyone should learn to code. Learning to code is the only skill that you can learn in a month that has infinite earning potential. There's no other skill that you can learn that will do this for you. By learning to code, you can build for free and ship for free. And this is important because nothing else is inherently free like coding. Take Facebook or Meta, for example. It's one of the most valuable companies in the world, yet it's built entirely on software there's no physical product to facebook it's just software there are lots of valuable skills in the world and sales might be one of them it's an incredibly valuable skill but it's dependent on one critical thing which is having something to sell if you don't have anything to sell you're not going to sell anything even if you're a really good salesman but on the opposite side of the spectrum, if you have a good enough product, then you won't really need sales. It will kind of sell itself. Being able to create the product you want to sell is way better than being able to sell the product you can't create. I just want to say this whole concept of leverage comes from Naval Ravikant. So if you haven't listened to him, go listen to him. But in most businesses, this sort of leverage comes from money. It's basically you invest in labor or you invest in machines to make a product or you buy stuff to make a product. But in software, the leverage comes from the skill itself. You don't need to buy machines or pay a factory to create anything for you. All you need is a computer and the internet. And a really good example of this is that you can write a piece of software in your basement like Bitcoin and create billions of dollars worth of, worth of value without really investing anything. And that really is unmatched leverage that you won't find anywhere else because programmers can create value without relying on the tr traditional forms of investment like money or infrastructure. So learning to code really is the best way to add free leverage to your portfolio in a way that no other skill can do. That's why coding really is OP. Four, coding is creative. So this one is a little bit surprising, or it was to me at least. I 
there was no way that I could conceptually understand or would have even believed that coding would be creative. I sort of had this misconception of someone writing down like some really boring form of math, almost like writing ones and zeros in a row or writing text that was gibberish that you really didn't even understand if you were a programmer. And it was just like, I could not see how that could be creative. But today I'm a YouTuber who edits and makes videos and films videos and takes photos and edits photos. Also, I like to draw, I like to paint. I like to do pretty much anything that's creative. And coding is one of my favorite creative outlets. So that really should speak volumes, I think, because I really get the same excitement that I did as a kid when I was like up in my room in my parents' house, just scouring through my Lego drawer, looking for that one piece that would complete my Black Pearl replica. Uh, I get the same feeling when I'm coding. Even when the code doesn't have a user interface, I still get the same sort of feeling that I'm building something out of nothing. And even more so, obviously, when doing like websites or apps, because then you're just part of the entire creative process where you can design how it's going to look and what the button is going to look like. And then you can actually code it and bring it to life, which is just such a cool thing. And it's like the ultimate creative process of just deciding like, I want that sort of button. And I want it to look like that. And I can add this feature, I want it to do this thing. Uh, maybe I want to add like a Rick Roll Easter egg in my app. It's all up to me. So that along with the feeling of knowing like, yeah, I could build that is very fulfilling. And uh, that's one thing that I think you should think of if you feel like you're sort of an artsy person or you feel like you're not the typical programmer. Programming is actually very creative and it's very fun to do for someone that is creative. Number five, it's easier than you think. So five years ago, I wouldn't have believed you if you told me this, but coding is easy. And I didn't think that it was because I, at 25 years old, which I was at the time, thought that I'd completely missed the train on learning how to code. I thought if I didn't start when I was five, I would have no ability to ever learn how to understand it. I thought it would take that long to learn it. I thought... If you start at five, you might be able to kind of get it by 20. Um, now, I might sound completely retarded when I say this, but that's what I, th I was thinking. And uh, maybe I was an ex extreme case in terms of like how lost I was on this stuff. And maybe I hadn't thought about it completely or too much, but I literally didn't think that I would ever be able to do it. But this is also good news for you, because if you don't think that it will take 20 years or 15 years to learn how to code, then you're in a better point than I was. You know more than I did when I started. And that means that hopefully you'll believe me when I tell you this, which is that it isn't as hard as I thought it was, but it isn't even as hard as you think it is right now. So in uni, when I started my software engineering degree, the first course that we did was object oriented programming. And this was a course that lasted two months. And during that two months, they teach you how to code. And by the end of it, pretty much every single student in the class knew how to code or the basics of how to code. And so to really hammer this home, I want to say that I was so excited about this course that I actually got the book for the course, which was Java Head First. I got that book a month early so that I could kind of prep myself. I was going to read that book so that I would be able to actually manage this course because I was like, I'm going to learn how to code. This is going to be so intense. I want to make sure that I can actually do this. So I got the book one month before. I finished the book before the course started, by which point I knew programming well enough to complete all of the course assignments on time and get good grades on them, while at the same time building my first ever app and publishing my first ever app all at the same time. And before reading that book, I couldn't have done any of that because I didn't even understand what a class was in programming, which if you don't know anything about programming, then you wouldn't know either. But that's a pretty basic concept and I didn't understand it. Now, I feel like I need to give some sort of context to this just so that you understand. I'm a Rain Man like genius. So obviously I could do what I did, but you can't. And that's really important. It's really important that you understand that you can't and really shouldn't try this. I'm not saying this because I'm scared. I'm not scared that you will go out and do it and you'll do it faster than me and make me look stupid. Why would you even say that? I'm not scared of that at all. Um, 
but I want you to know that it's too hard and it, there's no point trying it. So don't try it. Um, take it from the guy who knew that if you wanted to learn how to code, you have to start at five years old in order to be decent at it at 20. I think I know what I'm talking about when I say that it's too hard and you really shouldn't attempt it. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you got something out of it. Uh, go learn how to code and I'll see you in the next one.